Hello everyone, thank you for joining this month's Connect with Control M session. My name is Chris and I'm a technical support analyst. Today we will be discussing securing the Control M Enterprise Manager connectivity with the Control M server in version 920. Our panelists joining us today are Joe Tumor and Mario Rodriguez. We recommend viewing the presentation in full screen mode by selecting the arrow button on the bottom right hand corner of the video player. Selecting the video quality option to view in full resolution will offer the best viewing experience. Please note that this presentation is available via the Attachments tab on the bottom of your screen. For any questions you may have during the presentation, please feel free to post them in the Ask Question box. We will address them at the end of the presentation. We will be covering the following topics during this session. First, an overview to configure SSL between the Control-M Enterprise Manager and Control-M Server. Next, the requirements and considerations to consider before starting. After, we will have a demo outlining the process steps. We will then recap and provide our resource links for this process. And lastly, we will have a question and answer session with our panelists. Here is an overview of the process. We will configure SSL between the Control-M Enterprise Manager and Control-M Server. The connections that will be secured will be the CMS to the Control-M Server CA and the gateway connection to the Control-M Server CE. Out of the three possible Control-M zone configurations, this is SSL Zone 2. Here is a diagram showing this. The Control-M Enterprise Manager CMS is connected via SSL to the Control-M Server CA. Also, you can see the Control-M Enterprise Manager Gateway connected via SSL to the Control-M Server CE. Next, we will go over the requirements. PKCS number 12 is the only keystore format supported on Control-M version 920. PKCS number 12, also known as PKCS12 or PFX, is a binary format for storing a certificate chain and private key in a single encryptable file. The keystore and private key password must match. This password should be eight characters or less. The certificate must have server and client purposes as well. Here is a diagram showing the process for enabling SSL in Zone 2. If you are unable to obtain a P12 keystore from InfoSec, you will need to perform the steps on the left of the diagram. This starts with generating a CSR or Certificate Signing Request, get a signed certificate with a certification chain, create the P12 keystore, then deploy the P12 keystore with the CTM key tool utility, test the connection, then change the control and configuration to use SSL. If you are able to get a P12 key store from InfoSec, then you only need to perform the steps on the right of this diagram. That is to deploy the P12 key store, test the connection, then change the control and configuration to use SSL. In the demo, we will be performing the following. First, we will generate the CSR, known as the Certificate Signing Request. Then we will create a P12 key store using the Certificate, Private Key, and CA Certificate. Next, we will deploy the certificate using the CTM Key Tool Utility. Next, we will troubleshoot and test the connection before making the changes for the control and configuration on the Enterprise Manager and Server. Lastly, we will configure the Enterprise Manager and Server to use SSL. First, we will log in to the Enterprise Manager and then open up the CCM. We'll be looking to confirm that SSL is not currently configured between the Enterprise Manager and Server. We will open the Control-M Configuration Manager via the Tools Home in the Enterprise Manager. Once in the CCM, you can see the gateways are connected, but not via SSL. Now we will log in to our Control-M Enterprise Manager and switch to our Control-M Enterprise Manager account. After changing to the user's home directory, we will specify the full path to the CTM key tool utility in order to generate a certificate request. You will use the dash create underscore CSR space dash password and your private key password with this command. Now you can see a certificate signing request file and a private key file were successfully created in the EM data SSL certificate requests in the EM data SSL private keys directories. I will now show you the files that were created in these directories.
Now I will show you a folder that we copied into this directory, the certificates received from our InfoSec team. This will be the root CA certificate, intermediate CA certificate, and the signed certificate for the server, as well as the private key that was created with the certificate request. Now I will append the intermediate CA into the root CA. With the intermediate CA certificate appended to the root CA certificate, we will now generate the P12 file using the command open SSL. To create the P12 file, you will use the command open SSL pkcs12 in certificate pem file name dash in key, the private key file name dash export dash pass out pass colon the key store password dash pass in pass colon followed by the private key password dash ca file followed by the certificate chain pem file name dash chain dash out and then you will specify the key store p12 name i will be naming it bmc.p12 Please keep in mind that if the key store password and the private key password do not match, or if the dash chain flag is not used, this command will fail. Now we will look back at the directory, and you can see the bmc.p12 file was created. Now we will test that we are able to open the p12 generated file with the command open SSL pkcs12 info dash in and the file name, in this case bmc.12. It's prompting for the passwords used. And now you can see three certificates in the private key. Now we will deploy the certificates on the ControlM server. We will use the CTM key tool utility for this. Please keep in mind that you need to use the full path when using this utility. You'll use the option dash key store, followed by the P12 key store file with its full path, then dash password, then the key store password, followed by dash pass w key. The file that uses dash pass w key parameter is an encryption key, which is used to encrypt the key store password in the environment's SSL configuration. Both binary and textual files can be used for this purpose. It is possible to use the tree.bin file. The tree.bin file on the controlm server is located in the controlm server home directory slash data slash SSL slash cert. You can see that the certificates were deployed successfully. Since the ControlM Enterprise Manager and ControlM Server are both running on the same machine, you can use the same P12 file for both components. Deploy the certificates from the ControlM Enterprise Manager using the same CTM key tool. However, you will use the path for the Enterprise Manager. This is located in the Enterprise Manager home forward slash bin CTM key tool. You will use the same options as prior, just specifying a different path. And then for the tree bin file, you will locate that in the enterprise manager home slash Etsy slash site slash resource slash local slash tree bin. And you can see this was also successfully imported as well. Now we will test that we can establish an SSL communication using the certificates deployed.
We recommend doing this test before changing any configuration parameters or recycling any components. We will be performing this test using the tool PLC underscore server. It is used with the option dash H followed by the host name, dash P followed by the ports. In this case, it's 5555, dash capital S. Then you will use the site.plc located in the CTM server home slash data slash SSL slash cert, then dash capital P, and then you will use the co.plc located in the CTM server home slash data slash SSL slash cert as well. Now we'll leave this alone and then we'll open a separate session and log into the EM and change to the EM account user. Now we will use the tool PLC underscore client to test the connection on this end. The option being used will be tech H followed by the host name, tech P followed by the port, tech capital S, and then the site.plc, but this one will be located in the CTE, CTM EM home slash Etsy slash site slash resource slash SSL slash cert slash site.plc, tech capital P, and then you will use the em.plc also located in the CTM EM home slash Etsy slash site slash resource slash SSL slash cert slash em.plc. And now you can see that the connection is established using the certificates that we deployed. Now we will be updating a system parameter in the EM called CMS COM mode. We will be changing it from TCP to SSL. Afterwards, we will recycle the CMS and the gateway. Now back on the control M server, we will use CTM sys to enable secure socket layers. You will use system parameters, go to the next page, and it'll be option nine. So we'll change it, it'll go to disabled, we'll do it again, it'll go to enabled, and then we'll enter S and hit enter to save and return to the main menu. Now we'll use CTM menu to recycle the control M server. Choose option one, and then we'll issue a stop ball with option six. Now that we've confirmed that it's not running, we'll go ahead and issue a two to start it. And once it's started, we'll issue another check all just to make sure it is up and running. And now you can see that the gateway is connected via SSO. Now we will deploy the certificates on the Control M Windows server. We will repeat the first step on the Linux server to generate the CSR. Again, just like on the Linux server, you will need to specify the entire path to the CTM key tool utility. You'll use the same create underscore CSR option, as well as the dash password and specify the password you wish to use. So you can see CSR and the private key file were both successfully created. The CSR being in the EM home slash default slash data slash SSL certificate request. And then the private key being in the EM home default data SSL private key folder. Now we will go to the directory where we have copied our already authorized certificates. So just like on the Linux server, we need to append the intermediate CA into the root CA. Let's take a look at the file.
so you can see that they've been appended. Now we will generate the P12 key store using the same OpenSSL PKS12 command. We'll be using these certificates in the directory that I showed you earlier. Please keep in mind that you need to use the same key store password that you use for the private key when creating the certificate request. Also, if you do not use the dash chain flag when you are running this command, the command will fail. So let's take a look at the directory and you can see the bmc.p12 file was created. So now we need to test it using the open SSL pkcs12-info-in command. Prompts for the password again. Two more times. And let's take a look and confirm that all three certificates and the private key are there. So as you can see, there were three certificates and the private key. Now that we know that the P12 file is good, we will deploy the certificate to the ControlM server on this Windows machine. We will do so using the same CTM key tool script with the dash key store using the P12 file using the full path that we just made, dash password with the key store password, dash pass w key, and using the tree.bin file. So we can see that it was successfully deployed. So now we can use CTM sys again. And what we'll do is we'll enable the secure socket layer on this Windows machine for Control M server. Do it one more time and it'll be set to enabled. Click S, enter to save. And now we can recycle the Control M server with CTM menu again. stop all so it's shut down now do a check all confirm it's not running and then we'll do a start all do one last check all and it's back up. So now we can check the CCM. We don't need to make any changes on the EM side because we did that already with Linux. And we can see now that both gateways are connected via SSL. So this concludes our demo and we will move on. In summary, we generated a CSR and created a .p12 key store and deployed the certificate. We tested the connection and then updated the ControlM configuration to use SSL. Here are the resources for this process. First is our documentation for configuring SSL in Zone 2. The second is how to troubleshoot SSL handshake errors between the ControlM Enterprise Manager and ControlM Server using PLC underscore client and PLC underscore server tools. This knowledge article number is KA0002049 and includes a YouTube video. Thank you for attending this presentation. We hope the information provided proves useful in helping you set up SSL in your control M environment. We would like to encourage you to provide your feedback on the webinar in the feedback tab. Please let us know what you thought about this presentation, any topics you would like covered in the future, or any comments or suggestions you may have. Also, we will be sending you a survey in the following days. We would appreciate it if you took a few minutes of your time to fill your responses and send these in. You may follow us on social media platforms via Facebook and Twitter. Past BMC webinars can be viewed on BMC communities via YouTube and iTunes. Today's webinar will be posted in a few days. We will now proceed with the question and answer session.